Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about uh, something that doesn't always get discussed, and I'm not saying this is going to make or break your bench in any way. In other words, this is not going to turn your 300 bench into a 400 bench, because uh, I have clients who bench 400 plus. I don't. <laughs> I have clients who do, and uh, this is not how we got them there. But what I am saying is that this could give you a very small advantage on your bench press and keeping in mind all these lifts will carry over to your deadlifting as well. I mean, we could actually make a better case for them in <laughs> your deadlift than we can the bench press. But the point here is that they're, they're still obviously important. Uh, and I do want to point out this will not make up for the primary movers. In other words, your pecs, your delts, and your triceps are going to do the brunt of the work. Any way you break it down, things like leg drive, tightness, bar path, technique, that will matter too. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these other lifts that I'm doing here and how they can add a little bit to your bench. Again, I want to point out this is not going to make or break you. But if you've already got a pretty decent bench, these things will help you. They'll help you maintain a better bar path. They'll help you get more power out of the bottom. Uh, and these lifts that I'm discussing here are going to be pull-ups, rows, hammer curls. And they do it for a variety of reasons. Now, as far as the hammer curls go, it's kind of the same reason these, these rows and pull-ups are beneficial. When you bench press, when you're at the bottom of the lift, look at the position of your arms. Okay, your elbows are completely bent, your forearm is pressed up against your bicep. So, a little bit of common sense here. Stop and just think about the forces being applied and the leverage involved because they're not down at the end of the arm, they're right there in the middle. So if you think about it in, in terms of the levers and the moment arms there, what you have is the potential for a little bit of squish. And, you know, some people will point out, well, yeah, body fat will help there. It will, but not as much as muscle because muscle is going to have a lot more spring than fat is. And if your entire arm around that area on both sides of the elbow is, is more developed, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to have a little bit more squish, a little more pop right out of the bottom at the elbow. You know, and it's only going to be at the bottom, obviously, right? It's going to be at the very, very bottom. And if you think about it, people say, well, just big biceps. Well, big biceps alone won't do that. You really need the forearms. You need the brachialis uh, right there at the edge of the bicep on the side of it. That's helpful along with the bicep. And those are going to press against the brachial radialis. All right. The brachial radialis is that big muscle at the top of the forearm. Okay. And that's most worked when we do things in a hammer grip or a pronated grip. But those are going to help build that muscle up at the top of the forearm up there. Because again, it's not your flexors or extensors. Those matter too for gripping the bar. Again, big thick forearms can give you a better grip on the bar, which can help you transfer uh, power better. But that radial brachialis, that big triangle shaped muscle right up there at the top of the forearm, that's what gets squished against those other muscles, the brachialis and the bicep. And if you can get all three of those pretty good size, you know, I'm not saying they've got to be pro bodybuilder size because, you know, I mean, you're not going to do that without their genes and their, their drug stacks. But if we can put some extra meat there, it will give you a little bit more squish. Now, the hammer curls will do a lot for this, but so will the rowing, so will the pull-ups. Now, I'm going to say the hammer curls may do a hair more because again, it's a little bit more direct work for some of that, but those others certainly can add to it significantly. But if we're doing all of them, we're going to get a better effect there, right? It may help you a little bit. Now let's get over and let's talk about the rowing and the pull-ups. All right, uh, upper back versus lat gets debated a lot. You see a lot of people, and you'll see a lot of evidence-based guys will say, well, the whole lat thing only comes from equip benching. They don't matter on the bench on a raw bench, and, and I'm going to respectfully disagree there. Again, a guy who's just big and strong, you know, with tons of muscle on his pecs and triceps is going to have a big bench anyways, okay? And that guy may not always need to focus on his lats, but let's come over and go back to that point. They'll always say that the, the upper back matters more, and that's true because it affects your bar path. Your upper back along with the anterior deltoids will affect your bar path, your ability to control the weight and stay tight on the way down on the eccentric. 
Okay, and that's going to be important when you go to transfer power the other direction. Okay, so that upper back, and again, actually really the entire shoulder structure matters for that. It absolutely matters on the eccentric, and that's where, again, the rows and stuff can come in handy a lot. Uh, but, you know, any shoulder work will do that part. Any shoulder work, your overhead pressing, laterals, whatever, it, it all will affect that. But the rows will really hit the upper back very effectively, and it gives you a more stable platform to press against. So what about the lats? Here's the best way to think about it. You know, you'll get people who will say, and I've seen evidence-based guys will say, oh, the lats don't help because, you know, there's, there's a very, very little activation on the EMG in the lats. And if you look at the biomechanics, they're not involved in lifting the weight. And that's true. And I tell you, that's a great piece of information and it's great data, but here's the point that people are forgetting. When you have really big lats, uh, anyone who has good sized lats, and I have pretty good sized lats, one of the things that we notice on the bench press, and I'm gonna say this is a little more pronounced if you're a little closer of a grip, okay? If you're a little bit closer grip bencher, you notice it even more. But when you tuck, because we tuck at the bottom of the bench, right? We tuck those elbows in. What do they press against? Well, they, they press against the lats, right? And we have our lats retracted, everything pulled back. And then you press those arms in. The triceps get tucked in on the bench press. So when that happens, it creates a spring. It's an external force. It's not the lats firing that's, that's affecting the weight. It's the lats being an external pressure pressing against the back of the arm. Okay, and when you drive out of the bottom, if you tuck and those arms get pressed against the lats, when you go to drive out of the bottom, if you, your lats pop at all, they tend to press against the back of the arm. All right, that allows you to drive the weight up through external force. It's almost like a knee sleeve, right? If you think, if you think about a knee sleeve or a knee wrap, the way that it applies external force, it's not your muscles physically lifting more, it's an external device. Well, in this case, your lats are an external device. Yes, they're a muscle, but they're behaving as a device that is pressing potentially against the back of the arm, particularly if you tuck. So when we look at it from that perspective, the lats can help you out of the bottom of the bench. So why do I bring all this up? People would say, well, this is a very, very minor effect, right? This is a small effect. It is, but it's also at the weakest part of the bench. Where are most raw benchers weakest at? Right off the chest, right? Both of these cases, these muscles can help you apply external force to help cheat the weight up. Right? It's not about building muscle. It's not about recruiting more muscle fibers. It is about your one rep max. That's it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.